We're back on part two of episode 46 of the Collecting Confidant with your host, Gunstar Hero. This week's theme being puzzle adventure games. And the second game on our docket today is something that I I'm pretty pretty stoked about because this is bringing me back to 2005, tapping into my nostalgia feels from the PS2 era. This one is We Love Katamari Plus Royal Reverie, which is going to be getting a release June 2nd of 2023 for all major platforms, including PC, and a physical release for the PS4, PS5, Switch, and the Xbox One slash Series X. This game is such a blast. And I'm gonna give you a brief summary if you have been living under a rock and have never played Katamari since its first inception back in 2004 as Katamari Damashi on the PS2, a beloved cult hit created by Keita Takahashi, who then made the sequel, We Love Katamari, as fan service in 2005. And then after he left Bandai Namco, they realized how popular the IP was. So you have endless spinoffs on the PSP, the PS Vita, Xbox, and so on and so forth. But those two games, from 2004 and 2005, I considered to be the heart of the series because I'm kind of a purist and I wanted to just play what was made by Takahashi himself. So... Very simply, the game concept is pick up and play. Anybody can play this. You play as the prince, who is the son of the king of all cosmos. And in the first game, Katamari Damashi, the king got drunk, got rid of all the stars in the universe. So now he has tasked his son, the prince, which is you, to roll up objects using this adhesive ball known as a Katamari, which can pick up anything from like Legos and thumbtacks to cows, people, cars, and skyscrapers. The more you roll, the bigger you get. That's the simple concept. And all you do is you control the ball with both analog sticks. That's it. This is why the game was so beloved, not only for its zany, quirky humor, its bright and colorful graphics, its wonderful soundtrack, but just the fact that it's so easy to jump into and it just gives you a laugh. It has this zen vibe. So yes, the game can get challenging at some times when it has like a time limit or a certain list of objects you have to collect, but then there are other levels that simply just allow you to play, roll around, get bigger, and it really just feels relaxing, especially when you couple it in with the gorgeous soundtrack, which features all these different singers from around Japan using light jazz, lounge music, pop, and hip hop. It truly creates this wonderful, unique experience that I can understand why it's become such a cult hit phenomenon over the years. So now we get the remaster of the second game. And in fact, the first game, Katamari Damashi, also got a remaster known as Katamari Damashi Reroll. The reason I'm bringing this into the phrase is because we don't know much about the gameplay improvements for We Love Katamari Plus, so I'm going to make some healthy assumptions based on my experience with the first game's remaster to make a few hypotheses about how the sequel remaster is going to play. Firstly, before we get into some of the features with the sequel, let's set up the sequel in relation to the first game. So the sequel basically retains the same gameplay elements as the first game. You roll around, make your ball bigger, and eventually you create new stars within the sky to replace the ones that were lost. But the difference with the second game is now you're actually doing it for the fans. So the story goes is that the king and the prince have become famous from the first game, have developed this loyal following. So now all these fans are coming in making requests for all these Katamari that you need to roll up to add additional stars in the cosmos. And there were a few things that they added to the second game that weren't in the first. Now, firstly, and most importantly, in the first game, yeah, most of the game can be played solo, but there was also a two-player split-screen versus mode. They bring that back into the second game, but then they also add a single-screen co-op mode where you and a friend each take control of one of the analog sticks, and you can basically imagine some of the zaniness that's going to ensue. So they added that feature to the game. In addition, when you roll up some of your cousins, you can now play as them as well, so that's another welcome feature. But overall, the game remained intact, albeit it became a lot bigger, and there were even some really cool 
unique things that weren't in the first game, like different Katamaris. Specifically, one of my favorites was the fact that in one level you can roll around as a sumo wrestler, collecting food, making him fatter to eventually fight another sumo wrestler. Or then there are these wonderful cerebral experiences like the firefly level where you literally roll around collecting fireflies all set to this Japanese ballad and just I felt so at peace playing this man you can tell that I just love these Katamari games especially when I need something light and easy to play where it doesn't need a lot of thinking and I need a good laugh this is always one of my go-to's so I'm so happy to see the second game which I think is superior to the first one getting the remaster so now Let's talk about some of the stuff that's being added to We Love Katamari plus Royal Reverie that wasn't in the original PS2 version and which is going to make it even better than the first game's remaster because essentially Katamari Damashi Reroll was just an upgraded port with HD visuals and better controls. I'm going to highlight that. Better controls. Going back to the PS2 version which I played of We Love Katamari for this video, I found the controls to be very stiff which... Even in the past, I kind of complained about that. Yes, the game was fun, but turning was a bit slow, and it felt like you really had to jam on those analog sticks to really do anything. That was resolved in Katamari Damashi Reroll, which is just quicker, more fine-tuned, more accessible, and just feels better to play. But now, the sequel, We Love Katamari Reroll Plus, is going to add even more features. Most notably, it's going to add the Royal Reverie part of the game where it's additional stages where you get to play as the young version of the king and see more of the backstory with some new challenges. So that is the part that's got me most excited for the expanded content. But then, in addition to the updated graphics and the tighter controls, there's also going to be some other welcome quality of life improvements. Most notably, in the select meadow where you meet all your friends and travel around to get the missions, there's going to be a quick select so you can choose your mission a lot more efficiently. Even better than that, there's now going to be a new navigational function that will actually show you where your goal or the exit of the level is, whereas in the PS2 game, sometimes I found it a little bit frustrating if I hadn't memorized the level, I'd run out of time before getting to the goal. That's going to be resolved by adding that navigational function. And then on top of that, there's going to be a jukebox mode where you can pick and choose the songs you want to be having played during the game. And then also there's going to be a selfie mode if you're into taking snapshots. But one of the biggest additions on top of the additional content is that they're bringing back a fan favorite feature from the first game known as the eternal mode where you just turn off the clock and just roll to your heart's content. So I am so giddy about this getting a remaster because I think that We Love Katamari, even though it was very similar to the first game, was just superior and I'm glad to see getting the HD treatment with all the new features. And if you're interested in picking it up, it is coming out June 2nd, 2023, physically for the PS4, PS5, Switch, and the Xbox One slash Series X. Now, I do have to add an asterisk to this because when I was looking through all the North American retail sites, I only saw listings for the Switch, PS5, and Xbox. I did not see the PS4, and I had to go all the way to Play Asia to be able to order a PS4 version of this. So just mind you, if you are looking for a last-gen version of this on PS4, you may have to import it, but otherwise, all the versions are retailing for $29.99 US, which is a steal, considering how much fun you're going to have with this, how much content is packed into this. So I highly recommend this one from a nostalgic point of view. This game still feels as fresh as it did back in 2005. Stay tuned for part three. We're coming back with one more puzzle adventure game that was heavily influenced by Katamari. You won't want to miss this one. Stay tuned.